Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. Alright, we're coming in with our favorite show, yo. E. Greenleaf, Season 4, Episode 2, Did I Lose You? Okay, let's uh -huh. go ahead and do the YouTube thing. For you all that have come back to Revival, to the Hustle Headquarters, we thank you for always coming back and supporting and rocking out with us. If you're new to the church, would you raise your hand so we can give you a new members packet? Uh -huh. As our pastor would say, we got a little trinket for you. We have a t-shirt, bottle of water, coffee. Give you the water if coffee ain't your thing. E but anywho, welcome to the channel. Go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Go ahead while you're at it, hit your bell. That bell will let you know when we come through like your ring doorbell and be like, ding dong, hey. Bing. And go ahead and rate the video. <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down at this point, it doesn't even matter. You've already been counted. So, I had a wonderful question on my mind last week and then I forgot to ask it to you all. What's going on with Charity, y'all? Hmm. Do y'all think that she's suffering from um, bipolar depression or do y'all think that she is going through um, postpartum? Hmm. Because something in the water ain't clean or do you think that she's still abusing those pills? Hmm. I called the pills and potions last week. Yep. That could be very true. Very true. I don't even know. But y'all let me know what y'all think about it. But we're going to get right yeah. into it and try not to hold you long, as the pastors would say. <laughs> um, we want to, first of all, we want to thank Bishop Silverthroat, a.k.a. Bishop Lester Wallace, yeah. for that beautiful opening selection yeah. that was so unforgettable. Yeah. We just want to thank you. He has a beautiful voice. Yeah, he, he always does. has. Yeah. Even his speaking voice is beautiful. So we see that Charity is still on her bull skip, but she came in this week as if she's trying to apologize to um, Gigi for uh -huh. how she acted earlier. So Gigi was like, you know what, well, you're going through a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm going through a lot. You know, <laughs> all is well. That's how sisters do. They get mad at each other. They fuss fight and they make up. But no, no, no. Charity is on the bull skip because she wants to work her way back into her role as um. Minister music. music. Yeah. And also, she don't want to give Gigi any notion that she's up to something. Yeah. So keep her close. Keep your enemies close, right? Yeah. So she's on that. And I'm like, okay, here we go. She said that she was going to help her get a job back. And eventually, she did help her get her job back at the church, okay? So let's go on Jacob and Carissa. <laughs> Carissa wants to get the heck out of the house. I want them out the house because I'm always trying to figure out when people have to move back into their parents' house. What did you do with all of your goddamn money when you were living with them the first time? Yeah. Have you all ever asked that question to people mm -hmm. that have had an opportunity to not pay no bills, live real good, but then when they have to get out on their own, they suffer? Check out. What, what they was, all about? was turning out with that money, man. Obviously, they were taking that money and buying what they want. So she wants so to get out of that life. <laughs> like somebody said on Facebook one um one day, they said, "I don't want to see y'all hoes that were living y'all best life all summer long in the free school supply line to get your kids <laughs> in the paper." I said, "Ooh, you said it, not me." Yep. So. Carissa has reached out to a realtor. She's found this beautiful home that she wants to take a look at. And the, um, the realtor showed her the home. Carissa was like, I really think that this is the house. But we ain't got no funds like that. I said, well, first of fridge and all, why you waste this lady um, time exactly. if you don't have the money? First of all, why she ain't screen you first? Most realtors I know screen you first before mm -hmm. you waste all their time. Yep. Certainly with a house that looks like it costs over 300000 They definitely yeah. want to screen you first. You gotta get pre-qualified, yeah. man. <laughs> before I drive that good BMW up over there. So I line. need both of your social security notes so I can run your credit report. <laughs> and see if you still have good standards. Uh -huh. Make sure your credit score is good, uh -huh. man. Let's see if we got a 700 or above. Huh. So the realtor was like, you know what? Maybe I can work some things out. I'll get in touch with you. And I said, well, what, 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 what can you work out, honey? Yeah, well, I mean, what, what secrets of the trade did you know that y'all not sharing with anybody else? Yeah. So Carissa ends up bringing this information back to Jacob. Jacob was like, nice house, but well, how we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. She said, I got an idea. How about we sell the land that the church without walls <laughs> ain't on, but we're waiting. I know he wouldn't fit and do that. Jacob said, uh-uh, no, mm -hmm. no, no. I, I, I have some ideas floating around my head because, honey, I had an opportunity. Now, earlier that day, 
<laughs> Jacob met up with Dante. Hmm. Remember Dante? That his mama from last week wanted him to mentor him, get him back on the path of straight and narrow. Well, Dante pulled up wrong. Yeah, all wrong. Speeding. Wild. Wow. Blasting rap music. <laughs> typical mm <-hmm> skit. <laughs> and he's gonna tell another dude, get in, get, the back. get in the back because it's the pastor. And the guy was looking like, buck the pastor. Yeah. You get in the back. <laughs> and I said, first of all, Jacob, buck you. Because I would have never sat my tail in his car. Huh. Not driving like that. If you then he's gonna, he gonna take off wrong table. Well, if you don't value your life, I know <laughs> you're not value mine. mine. Yeah. <laughs> Just like people that always want to borrow money on your credit. You think I'm gonna let you live my get my credit? You don't care about, about your credit. Why yeah. like you? No. I co signed for you for no skit. So, <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> I'm not playing. Lord <laughs> so, have mercy. Jacob ended up talking to this guy, and the guy pretty much told Jacob straight up, bruh, you wanna make some extra cash or, or no? Gave him a, um, a stack of 10 racks, ten right? 10 racks, man. I was like, and he told him, he said, you know what, I know what you're paid to do, but I don't want people all up in my business every time I turn up and how I throw money at the club. I don't want nobody knowing all my business. So here's, here's, some, here's some hush money. So that you can do what you do. And keep I, my image clean. Yep. We, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And I thought that Jacob being the broke mm, that he yeah, is right uh -huh. now. And knowing that his wife wants to get out of this, out of his mama house, I thought this was a really good opportunity for I was Jacob. Tempt, I was tempted for him, man. Because you know how Jacob is. Uh -huh. I really thought that Jacob was going to take this money. But like, Jacob thank said, you, player. <laughs> yeah, I thought he, because he told him, said, put that money away. I said, oh, you don't want nobody to see you on camera doing it. I know how you about to do uh -huh. it. When Let's you go get, outside. Yeah, Let's go, go outside, outside and come out the bush. Well, Jacob told the guy, and I said, oh, that was powerful. I said, maybe Jacob changed his life. He gave his life to the Lord. Yeah, he saved for real now. Jacob <laughs> said, you know what? I live my life like that. I live my life cashing checks. And one day, son, that bill came. Yep. He said, the bill is going to come one day. He said, nah. And so the guy said, you know, maybe you'll make me a saint after all. <laughs> I was just testing you anyway, player. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. No, you no, won't. You won't. <laughs> I said, okay, let, let's do it. So Jacob ends up having to have a meeting with Phil. Y'all know Phil. Mm -hmm. He went in the meeting because Gigi didn't want to have a meeting with the guy. She said, every time I come to the church, this ninja want to meet. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Uh, yeah. If you've ever been to church, you know what a meeting is. Oh, we about to meet the suckers. Yeah. I know, but we ain't did nothing yet. Yeah, exactly. Like, what you got to talk about this Sunday, Mike? <laughs> that we didn't talk about last Sunday. Yeah. And that you didn't call me on the phone. And then you wait. go in the meeting and I'm coming out there all pissed off and they got to go in the service and they're like, hey, nothing ever happened. That's when you shout real hard because you yeah. have it. You having your own therapy session over there. <laughs> and you're like, somebody praise the Lord. Do, 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 do. Come on back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back. I just had a therapy yeah. session right there. <laughs> So, no, where was I at? Uh, Phil. Phil, Phil let Jacob know, listen, that little youth program that y'all do every year, that's not going to cut it for um, um, Hustle Headquarters. Yeah. We do something a little different, a little bit more inclusive. We have some things set up, blah, 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 blah. Y'all not going to be able to go to Blue Lake like y'all usually do. Yeah. We're not going to approve it. He said it's, it's a little bit too streamlined mm -hmm. for the people. Is it too, a little too black? Yeah. Jacob said, let me stop you right there. He said, you know what? This whole diversity and inclusion thing, at some point we need something to ourselves. So, we are yeah. a black church. That's what he exactly. wanted to say. Exactly. We are a black church that needs to have events and things that are geared towards our culture. Exactly. Things that we can relate to on all levels. Our music, our dance, mm -hmm. our hair, everything. Mm-hmm. So he was like, no, this is an event that we do for <coughs> us. He was like, you know what? We're not going to do it. He told Gigi about it. Gigi was like, you know what? Go ahead and book the guy dorm rooms. And I'll, I'll pay the, the difference. difference. I was like, wait a minute. But we forgot he, she got that money from her daddy. But that's right. Her real daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that paper to catch the difference. So when Phil got whiff of what she did, he was like, oh, so y'all just going to decide to secure the rooms, this non-refundable deposit. Without me knowing about it, Gigi checked him right. I'm paying for that. He said, a hundred thousand. Oh, you got that money like that? She said, right. I do. Yeah. I said, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. 
floss on him, Gigi. That's right. But I'm still mad that your daddy ain't give Aaron no money. That fucked up. Time. So Lady May. <laughs> Lady May is out with her granddaughters, right? And they're in the department store or they're in some kind of boutique, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're trying on things. And Lady May is kind of off to herself. And she's admiring herself in the mirror. And she gets a text message. And the text message says something, 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 38,000. I was like, what? Made payable to Harmony and Hope. <laughs> I said, Hustle Headquarters strikes. Yes, yes, once. sir. Again. When you send the bill via text, man. I said, oh. She looked at that and she said, the devil is, is a lot. <laughs> Everybody in there was like, whoa. Wait. She's talking about something. I, I, I dropped my phone. I dropped my phone. So you dropped your phone this way? That was more than a drop. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> so long story short, she had came home and she had ran past her husband. Well, ex-husband. I got to start saying that now. That's right. Because they did. Ran yeah. clean past her ex-husband and she ended up telling him what had happened. And we ended up knowing what had happened. That guy doing Connie don't struck again with her own, if only you knew we go. <laughs> because of that day with Lady May, they're not approving the overage. They want her to pay that money and to settle her debt with Hope. Nope, oh, Hustle Headquarters. Hustle Headquarters, they gotta settle that deal, man. I said, oh. So she pissed all the way off about it. She going off now. In the meantime, Bishop got this folder, this um envelope in his hand, right? Because earlier he had mentioned to Charity that he gonna get his woman back and he's gonna play his honeymoon. First the freaking all bitch. I see what you're doing here, but slow down a little bit. Yeah, and you always go out on the date. Yeah, you all at the honeymoon, man. You because he wants some cool. He, he messed up. Yeah, see that was that was the plan. It was yeah. Yeah, yeah the cooch was the plan. That that parish trip was gonna get the cooch. Uh, so uh, when she asked what it was, he said, oh, it's the bid from the exterminator. And Lady May went off. You send them to Connie's address. And I'm not going to be settled till everybody over there is laying on their back and legs kicking. I said. Including her. Including her. I said. <laughs> okay. So with that little bit of information, Bishop decided to do what Bishop does. Uh -huh. He handles things. The street way. Yep. So we see that he's meeting up with someone and they all in disguise and you know they don't want to be noticed. It's Corinne. Corinne hands him some documents and was like, Don't you tell a soul. You better tell nobody about gold. Yeah. It'll kill your mom. And come find out that she don't pass him the information to prove that kind of sites was paid off yep. by Hustle Headquarters. To come in there and take over the church. Yeah, which was no secret. Well, no secret, but now we had to prove. So he took that information back to Lady May and was like, this is our way to flush them out of our ministry and I can get the church over to you. Now, in my mind, as Mike B would say, this is what we wanted, right? Yeah, this is where we're going to do it. Yeah. And this is where I got all the way confused. Yeah. Because Lady May was like, you need to check your heart, Bishop. He said, my heart all right. Yeah. She said, no, it's not. No. No, it's not. It's not good. You're doing things that's going to defile your spirit. You need to choose between heaven and hell. And I'm like, <laughs> like what? Like, I'm like, do you want the church back or not? <laughs> that's why I was like, do you want the church? And he's looking at her like, when did we switch? Because just a few minutes ago, you wanted me to send the peoples over there to kill them. Yeah, now but I now, got the proof to get her out of there. And you said you don't want to do things this kind of way. Say, I'm really confused. Are you having a charity moment? Yeah. I said, she oh, wanted the Lord to flush her out. <laughs> I'm cool with that is. too, but you you know how you and your ex-husband roll. Yeah. But it's time to do and get what y'all need to get. Exactly. Okay. So, with that little bit of information, and Bishop also let it slip how he got there for me. Well, Lady May tripped him up. Yeah. And... So she goes over there and she meets with Corinne. Tell Corinne, because Corinne was about to spill some details to um, Charity. And I'm glad Lady May popped up at the same at the yeah. right time. And she basically told Corinne, you know I like you. And when I do take over the church, I want to see you in position. Yeah, I need you. But don't you get canned doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And was talking about her about matters of the heart, doing the right thing. And, and wow. Corinne is looking at her like... 
Okay. Okay. I, I know who you are. You know, I, I did what you said. I done covered up a lot of skin in this church. Uh huh, exactly. <laughs> so now you're talking to now me like the revival's working, y'all. The revival is working. So, God darn Corinne, man, you know, uh, Michael Minifim said he caught between a pimp and a hard place. She, <laughs> she caught between a few pimps and a hard place. God darn. So. She said, okay, I have this envelope. I'll need you to give it to Connie Sykes before her meeting tonight. And she said, and if you want to know, it is to settle up my $38,000 debt for a day with Lady May. I have um, wiped my slate clean with everything. I said, Lady May, what's going on? You're trying to be safe for real. Like, are you really trying to prove that you are qualified yeah. to run this church. See, my question is this right here. If you didn't want the church, would you be taking them measures and pay that $38,000 to them like that? That's a good question. Because after all, that was a church event. Yeah. So the church was supposed to have been fitting that whole bill. So you know that's a personal attack. That's what it was. It's a personal attack on her. Yeah. So. But Bishop fixed it though. He fixed it. He fixed it. And now he confused. He don't, yeah, he don't even know what to do. He don't put his little <laughs> tickets to Paris in his um, nightstand because he don't know what to do. I said, Bishop, you, I mean, you can call me. I, I'm not going to sleep with you, but I'll take that trip to Paris. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Don't slide them tickets on over here. Go on, go on put it in the mail to P.O. Box 9595. In Rico, Virginia, 23228. Yeah. That's the real P.O. Box. Y'all can drop a Paris ticket in there too. Uh -huh. Y'all want to. Yeah. But don't everybody drop Paris tickets. Some. You know. Do Montego Bay, Puerto uh, Where else we want to go? We want to go to Bora Bora. Uh -huh. Like that's my that's my dream vacation right there. Bora yeah. Bora. So if y'all want to drop some tickets in, PO Box Anguilla. 95. Now. Yes. Yeah. That's where Rick Ross be at. Uh huh. All right. So let's talk about. Let's talk about Gigi. Okay. Poor Gigi. Whew. Gigi goes to her office because she don't set up a meeting with Noah. And y'all know I love me some Noah. She gets in the office and of course Corinne did what she does and she made sure that he was in the room and nobody knew that Noah was there. Noah is hotter than fish grease at a church fish fry. I don't blame him. And I'm not even mad at him. Hey, you find out you got a son because he called from prison? How devastating yeah. is that? You didn't call me from college. Mm -mm. You didn't call me because you own a law firm. You called me from the prison. From the prison. The prison. <laughs> really? So he mm. was like, hold on. You have some splaining to do. Yes. And she said, you know what? I was 18 years old. I had just um, let my parents know about what Mac was doing to Faith. I had moved away, I moved to Arizona. When I got there, I realized that I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. I went to a clinic, I tried to um, abort this baby. I could not do it. So when I had the baby, I put him up for adoption and took him right out of my arms. The nurse said, if you don't do it now, you'll be, it'll be impossible for you to do. Mm -hmm. And she said, I placed him into, into an adoption. Mm -hmm. And she said, when he turned 18, he looked me up when they unsealed the records. So he was like, so he's been trying to get in contact with you. And in his mind and in my mind too, nowhere in between none of that. Did you let this man know that he yeah. had a whole son? Yeah. Not a piece of a son, not a fraction of a son, yeah. a whole son, mm -hmm. whole son. Especially when he turned 18 and he reached out to you, you knew at some point he was going to find, find his out. daddy. Yeah. I understand when you were 18, because when you were 18, you ain't you mature do 18 yet. People scared. Yeah, you just, like, I just need to get past the situation. I'm not thinking about consequences at all. But now you grown. Just a text or a phone call. I ain't talking to you. Yeah. Matter of fact, before you let him buck you on that wall when you came back home, <laughs> that would have been a good time to say, you know what? Uh, uh, we already have a son. Hmm. What? Get off the wall for a minute. Uh huh. <laughs> Pause. And Noah, here's and here's Noah's dilemma. Cause she said, "Have you told your wife about this?" He said, "I can't tell my wife this." Yeah. We are having problems conceiving ourselves. Mm -hmm. So how am I gonna tell my wife that we can't have a baby? But I got that, a baby with you. But I got a whole baby with you. Yeah. And y'all already got friction. That whole relationship thing is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. 
It's like, uh-uh. Yeah, because she's going to be like, y'all intentionally hear that from me. And you're only yeah. telling me now because he called from the prison. <laughs> and now he want to be a part because he yep. get ready to get out tomorrow. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh -huh. I know you're going to talk about it. Why? But since it's been flushed out, do you think they need to be a part of his life? Um, my first answer is always yes. Okay. Because I am an advocate of what you produce, you need to be responsible for. Mm -hmm. But I also am one of those people that says if you can't give a child what they need, then maybe it's best that you stay away hmm. and don't break them any further. Okay. So it's such a catch-22. Because gotcha. we love and we know Gigi and we love Noah, immediately I was like, they need to be in his life because they're ultimately good people, mm -hmm. good foundational roots, and I think that they would love the hell out of that boy. To give them good guidance. But if I didn't so know them, back to the pleasure. yeah, if I didn't know them, and then you don't know what this boy's been through. I mean, it's just a lot of factors. But my first mind would say, yes, be responsible for what you brought into the world. Totally agree. And then, if you really want to take it a little further, Gigi kind of did do that. Yeah. She knew she couldn't take care of him. She gave put him in the best care mm -hmm. and for them to find the best options outside of her. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that whole adoption thing is always a, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a catch 22. It's a catch 44 and a half. half. <laughs> so, I don't know. So, Noah, he left up out of there. He he hot. Pissed. And, um, and Noah was like, you know, does... Your fa I mean, and she broke it down and she was like, I couldn't tell anybody. She was like, just like you're having the problem, the trouble of telling your wife now, how can I tell my ex-husband that? Mm -hmm. We were already having problems and everything I did, he was threatening my daughter to take my daughter away from me. So what if he found out I had a whole son out there? Yeah. Oh, that would have been everything for him uh -huh. to hold up against my head. So she yep. was like, it's complicated. <clears throat> and I'm like, but Gigi... All right, I, I, I want him, I'm like, no, I'm not. But okay, before he turned 18 and, and he, he was with a whole nother family and you never thought that you would be a part of his life, okay, we we just going to wash that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's right, but we're going to wash that. But the moment that that boy reached out to you, <laughs> we got some, we got some work we need to do, beloved. <laughs> You need to, like what what like Shelly said, you need to get a voodoo blanket and cry about it and fix it. <laughs> Figure this skit out because he reached out once. That's not going anywhere. He's yeah. seeking his mom. Yep. He's seeking his dad. Okay. So with that bit of information, Noah ends up leaving the church and he runs into Jacob. And Jacob was like, you know, bro, what's going on? Yeah, a long you know, time bro, no bro. see, bro. What's up? <laughs> and he looked stressed. Jacob looked stressed. He said, how you and Carissa doing? He said, the same as Cedric <laughs> Migraine. Uh -huh. He said, no, I'm <laughs> yeah. just playing. I was like, no, you're not playing. No, you're not playing. And um, he told Noah, said, why don't you stop by the house and see my parents? You know, they would love to see you. Noah was like, uh, uh don't. Don't. He was like, I don't want to seem disrespectful. Because <laughs> I got to hurry up and go to the airport. Jacob was like, so you... Flew all the way here. Yeah, you came. You came to the church where my parents are because you didn't know that they won't they pass to the churches no more. So, huh? That makes no sense. Yep. So his intelligence went up all the way up. He had Gigi about it. He could tell something going on. Yeah. He can tell something going on. So, and Gigi ended up going home because now she has to talk to her daughter. But before this had even happened, we know that. Sophia is gearing up to go to HU. Yeah. You know. Yeah, university. And they're going to be driving through Williamsburg to the outlet because they yeah. want to go to the Michael, Michael Kors outlet. Yeah, I see what y'all doing. Uh, I see what y'all doing. Uh -huh. Thank y'all for yeah. representing, for showing that Virginia has some skin. Virginia has a lot of stuff on it. Yeah, we do. Fortunately, unfortunately. Stuff that we still discovered. We've been around here for 40 years. <laughs> some stuff we didn't even yeah. know nothing about. But for real talk. If y'all ever get to go to Williamsburg Outlet, bring your wallet. Maybe we need to do some 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 YouTube videos on Virginia tour. Just discover some stuff. Just get on the road and just ride. We going here and record that. Do so I have a budget? 
Of course you got a budget. Why am I doing it? Unlimited <laughs> budget. Cool. Hey. Because I was going to go to the outlet, man. What I'm saying, you can get makeup. as a um, cosmetic store out there. Like, I get really excited about stuff like that. Like, you can get your Smashbox stuff for, like, 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. You can get your um your MAC makeup for, like, $17. Yeah. You can get Michael Kors bags for $50 and $70. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how I know somebody told me. <laughs> Timberland boots. You can get, like, four pair of Timberland boots for under $200. Mm -hmm. They want some good deals. Man. Yeah, so... Now come on through. So Sophia, when you coming through, make sure you call me. I'll meet you there. I might even have a coupon for you. Yeah. So they're excited about that road trip that they're gonna take together and all that good skit and whatnot. And before that road trip could even happen, hmm. Gigi said, Sophia, come here. I got to sit. I got to tell you some skit. Now, we didn't see the conversation. I kept rewinding it back because I thought I had fast forward nah, through it. Nah, they, they commercial. Why y'all didn't let me hear how you told it to her? Yeah. I want to know. We just went to commercial break and, and came, came back, back. She was pissed. And Sophia was pissed off. And Sophia read her to hold the hell. Yup. Sophia said, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have a brother. You mean to tell me. All the cash money skits you talk about grandma and grandpa and how they weren't there for faith. Hey, mm -hmm. And you're not there for your own kid. Mm. Kind of hypocritical to me. And she was like, I'm trying to be there. She said, worth money? He don't need no, no money. money. He, he wanted mom. He needs his mom. And I was like, true. True. <laughs> and the words of two change. True. Couldn't say nothing. Yeah. You you gotta eat that one. You gotta eat it and you gotta eat it dry. You can't even put no gravy on that one. Eat mm -hmm. it dry. It's gonna hurt going down. So next thing we know, Miss Sophia jumps into her little Buick. <laughs> and she says she's driving her own self uh -huh. to college, but no. Her she's gonna pick her daddy up at a certain point and they driving to H U. Left Gigi out there on the curb. Basically saying, Sophia, I love you. I love you. She wouldn't even say it back. Nope. Pull it off. Now, ha. I understand you mad, but the way things happen in this world here today, mm -hmm. tell her, even if you got a mumbling under your breath, I love you. Because you never know. You can get you on that road and never return. Never see him again. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Life is like that. But it, it goes back to tell you, you know, yes, yeah, as bad as it, it looks. Wherever you in life right now, you make your decision that you think is best for right now. Yep. And most times you see, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, so you'll look back and be like, maybe I should have made a better decision. So that's why I don't believe in, you know, really judging nobody because yeah, you, can't. you you don't know that if it was you, you'd be like, well, I wouldn't have never did it that way. I would have did it like that's dust, dust, and dust. You don't know how you would have did it. No. You don't know. Matter of fact, all of us can look back and see some stupid skit we done did. Hello. Uh -huh. And matter of fact, matter of fact, some of us still living out the stupid decisions we made in our twenties. That's true. Uh huh. Yep. That's true. Hell, not even your twenties. At forty, forty-one. Yeah. Uh huh. Living out skip that you did at thirty-five. Exactly. Yep. Cause the decision you make today is gonna affect you down the road. Like in the words of Jacob. One day that bill gonna come. The bill gonna come. Yep. I said, oh, I'm gonna have to use that one, brother. Some of our bills are in collection. <laughs> I like that one. Yep, some of the bills in collection. Hmm. And y'all ain't even asking to call. Y'all just mm -hmm. think it's gonna go away. Nah, it don't. Problems just don't go away. They'll hide from you for a little while, but they'll come back. And you know what'll happen? It'll wait. Until it's something out there you really want. I agree. Say I got a story for them, y'all. I knew how it was going to happen. Yeah, I had and an accident. Boom. I had an accident when I was in school. I was going to school, and I looked down and turned my radio down. Looked back up, and the car in front of me was stopped. And I ran. I, I went to the side to try to avoid hitting the guy. My car hit his car on the side part of the back. Flew down through the field, jumped the curve. I mean, it was just crazy. And so. The guy dead at the time, I um I didn't have the proper insurance to cover it. So his dad sued my dad and them. Well, tried to anyway. And he said, we're going to get the money. I don't care what happens. Y'all going to pay me. And my dad was like, you ain't getting nothing from me. So he put a judgment on my credit. 
And you know, before we got this house right here, I had to pay him. And we didn't even know. Didn't even know. I Until had, we yeah. went to go and did all of this. I had to pay him before we got the house. I settled with him. It, I didn't pay him the full amount. I reached out to him and I said, you know, I know this happened back then. I'm sorry I was young. I made a bad decision. I he wish we like, took yeah, I wish we took care of it back then, but I can give you X amount if you go ahead and remove the adjustment. He said, All right, yeah, you can send the money. Yep. Well he was still nasty about yeah, it. Yeah, he's still a little nasty about it, but yeah. And it won't no chump change. But I thought it going away. So that bill came back to find me, man. And we could not settle on this house. Yep. And, and I was and I was around about about sixteen, seventeen, yeah. And we built this house when we were what, twenty four, twenty mm -hmm. five? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it don't go nowhere. Yeah. It'll, it'll hide to the So you got some problems right now? If you were on here young, fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a whole thing. But now, Gigi is sitting there looking at her phone, and she gets the phone call because she had set up a little account for him mm -hmm. so that he's able to call. And she knew it was her son calling, and she answered the phone, and they spoke. And you can hear the anger that he has towards her. Mm -hmm. And what's his name? AJ, AJ Donahue. Yeah. And he was like, so you're going to help. Basically, you're going to help me or not. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is what I hope doesn't happen. And I know and it happens all the freaking time. When kids are adopted and uh, or the parent wasn't there the way that they needed to be there for them, when they reconcile with them, it's almost like I'm going to get you back, eh? Mm -hmm. And now I hope it doesn't come become this. You do, you do. Yeah. You help. You buy. Uh -huh. You pay off my debts. You do this because they know you feel guilty. Yeah. About what you did and what you didn't do. Mm -hmm. So I hope it doesn't turn into that whole give me money. I don't want to talk to you, but give me this. Give me that. Um, I don't believe in that. I really don't believe. But I do believe you need to help them out. Yeah. But. The extent, I'm run clear of it myself, but I hope it doesn't turn into this thing. Yeah. But he knows about his sister. Yep. He did that that research. He had him with time. Him but time. Yeah. So I agree with I agree with that. I think if he don't if he don't want a genuine relationship with his mom, he don't even need to pursue it. But I'm gonna tell you what I think is gonna happen with this situation. I think he's <clears throat> gonna be so mad with his mom, but the person that's gonna be able to get through to him is Sophia. Yeah, especially now when he probably figure out that they live in a good life and no telling how he lived with his foster parents because and it's kind of ironic that he didn't reach out to them. You know, or maybe he might have been a problem child because his, he, you oh, know, he, he might have found both. Yeah, he might have found out that his mama did adopt him. And so he just acting out, at, you know, with them and they couldn't do nothing with him. Maybe that's why he was in prison. I don't know. Yeah, but can you imagine? And, yeah, this is a stretch. But can you imagine being in his shoes? And most people that adopt children aren't very wealthy. I mean, they have enough to do yeah. what they need to do they just and live help. a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. And some of them adopt multiples. Yeah, I'm talking about the ones that do it for the real reasons, not the ones for a money grab. And you find out that your real mom and daddy, or at least one of them, paid. Mm -hmm. Good life on TV, mm -hmm. preaching the gospel. How did it make you feel though? Yeah. For one, this dude probably don't want to hear skit about God, mm -hmm. church, none of that, because y'all just as hypocritical as y'all can be. First of all, you don't hear me. Pretty much toss me to the wind for somebody else to take care of my responsibility, but you tell everybody else how they need to live. Yeah. It's a whole lot, y'all. Now, that I do know that I do know that uh, adoptions is permanent. Once you have that, it's permanent. But probably his mind, probably he probably can justify. Uh, you was eighteen when you made the decision. You was young. You didn't know. You you couldn't afford it. But once you got to the point where you could afford it, why mm -hmm. didn't you make an attempt to come back into my life? You know what I'm saying? You had another child. You got married, and you didn't even think about me. Especially I after think, 18. I, yeah, Because I, I think before 18, if it's a closed adoption, you really don't have the right to do that. Oh, okay. You can't come out. Um, I mean, you can always try to, you know, speak with the adopted parents if you know that information. Yeah. Because that's what happened with um my 
my stepsister's brothers. Oh, okay. Their mother reconciled the relationship between the bio mom. Oh, and so you ain't even supposed to reach out like that? Not if it's closed. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But she reached out to her and she was like, they've always asked for you. Yes. So she allowed it. Yeah. So it's going to be good to find out the details of this adoption because I'm pretty sure that's probably going to come up in a few next episodes. Yeah. So it's about and to be can And then we can uh, make an opinion based on Yeah. So straight from the beginning. The dirty, dirty shout. Two up. Two down. Holla. Yeah.